Today I want to show and talk about some covers I've made for my Atom Lab gantry. Hello and welcome to C.S. Wilson Prints. I'm C.S. Wilson. If you have an Atom Lab gantry like I do, then you probably notice that there's a few gears and circuit boards that are exposed. Like here, and here, and here. These aren't necessarily a bad thing, I'm just not a big fan of open electronics and exposed moving parts, to a certain degree. A few months ago, I designed a couple of covers and made them freely available on Thingiverse. One for the x-axis pulley and one for the x-axis limit switch, which also works for the z-axis limit switch. I'll put links for those in the video description, and I want to talk a little bit more about those in just a minute. But for now, I want to introduce my newest enclosure, which is for the extruder circuit board. This will also be free and available on Thingiverse. And yes, I'll put it in the video description. So let's go over these covers, and I'll talk a little bit about them, and also show how to install them. And we'll start with the newest one, which is the extruder circuit enclosure. Now, originally, the gantry came with this metal housing that covered the entire hot-end carriage. It's a nice cover, but I removed mine several months ago. I've noticed that a lot of other gantry owners have done that, too. For me, it was mainly because it blocked the view of the filament path, and it added a fair bit of weight to the carriage. I also kind of thought it restricted some of the airflow, so the most logical thing to do would be to just remove it. Unfortunately, that now leaves the extruder circuit board exposed, and that kind of bugs me. So let me show you what I've done to solve that. The enclosure comes in two pieces, the base and the cover, and first thing you need to do is print those out. No supports are needed, and you can use the material and layer height of your choice. You won't have to unplug any of the wires when you install it, but I do recommend that you turn the machine off while you're working on it. Remove the four existing screws and save them as they'll be reused with the new base. Carefully lift the circuit board up and remove the four white nylon spacers. We won't need these for the new cover, so store them in a safe place to perhaps be used for a future project. Now orient the base so that the tabs are pointing to the back and the right side of the machine and set the circuit board into the recess. This should align the circuit board holes with the base holes. Next, mount the base and the extruder board to the extruder bracket using the four screws you removed previously. Now route the fan and or LED wires on the left side of the main connector at the rear, and route the thermistor wires so that it's next to the blue heater terminal. Orient the cover to align the openings with the connectors on the board and the exiting wires. Drop the cover over the base, making sure no wires are being pinched. There are two tabs on the cover that align with the slots in the base that should snap in place. And that's it. Next up is the X-axis pulley cover. This was actually the first cover that I made for this printer and the final design went through several iterations before I landed on this one. It also prints without supports and with the filament and layer height of your choosing. It simply slips over the pulley and behind the X-axis limit switch. I use M3 by 25 millimeter screws for this with nylock nuts. You can use regular M3 nuts for this, but I've found that there's a fair bit of vibration here and they would loosen over time, which would cause the cover to rattle. Lastly is the X-axis limit switch cover. This was designed to match the X-axis pulley cover and was originally part of it. Unfortunately, combining the two made the print too complicated and ultimately it failed. I think having them as separate covers makes it more versatile, plus by doing this, you can also use this on the Z-axis limit switch as well. As with the other covers, no supports are required and the material and layer heights are whatever you want them to be. It's held in place with tabs on the back side and has a witness hole over the LED so you can still see it when it lights up. Installation is simple. Just position it so it covers the left half of the switch circuit board, hook the top tabs behind the circuit board, and swing it down to clip the bottom tabs. Now slide it over until the right end aligns with the edge of the switch body. It installs to the Z-axis limit switch the same way. The location of the tabs also allows it to be used with the Z-axis end stop adjuster made by Kyle Borth also found on Thingiverse. I think having covers like these gives the printer a more finished look and also allows the user to personalize their machine by defining a custom color scheme. In other words, these covers aren't going to improve your print quality, but they just might improve your printer quality. Maybe, maybe a little bit. For those who are a little more industrious, you can remix these to add graphics or cutouts or whatever. Live it up, go crazy. 
So that's it for this one. I hope you found it informative, and if not, then I hope you were at least inspired in some way. And if not that, then I hope that you at least found it entertaining. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Anyway, keep 3D printing, I know I will, and I'll see you in the next one.